Well, hi, everyone. Hello, church family and all others who were joining us for this week's spiritual disciplines class at FCC. This whole summer, we have been talking in our weekend messages about the fruits of the Spirit. And if you were walking away from some of these messages thinking, you know, I really do want to become a more loving person or a more joyful person or peaceful, or as we talked about this past week, a more faithful person, I'm just not really sure how to go about doing that. Well, this class is designed to answer that how question. We believe that through practicing some spiritual disciplines or some spirit-infused habits, we can see the fruits of the Spirit begin to grow in our lives. This past weekend, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit of faithfulness. And I think David made a great point when he said, the degree of our faithfulness is the direct result of our regard for God's faithfulness. Check out this verse in Deuteronomy. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. God sets the ultimate standard for what faithfulness looks like, and he empowers us as his people to live faithful lives. So if we want to become a more faithful people, what is a discipline that if we practice it with regularity, with the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, can lead to becoming a more faithful people? Well, I think one discipline that can help us with this is practicing Sabbath. So what is the discipline of Sabbath? We could say it's an intentional, set-aside time of rest to commune with God. All right, that's just a very basic working definition of Sabbath, an intentional, set-aside time of rest to commune with God. Now, maybe the bigger question is, okay, but how are Sabbath and faithfulness connected? How does practicing Sabbath lead to us becoming a more faithful people? Well, I want to answer the question this way. If we go to the biblical story, we can see that our ultimate purpose as human beings is to live in relationship with God. In the beginning of the biblical story, God creates human, humankind in his image, and he creates us to live in relationship with him. In the beginning, God lives in perfect harmony with his creation, but then sin enters into the equation, and it disrupts this relationship. It creates alienation between us and God and between us and, and, and one another. So ever since that time that sin enters the equation in the biblical story, God begins enacting his plan of reconciling that broken relationship. And we have an ultimate hope from the biblical story that God will once for all restore this broken relationship and make his dwelling place once again with us. So practicing Sabbath then is about creating a space where we are faithful to that purpose, the purpose of being in relationship with God, the purpose of tending to this relationship. Sabbath is about carving out a space to invest ourselves in relationship with God and be with him. All right, Sabbath and scripture. Let's talk about a couple instances where Sabbath occurs in scripture. One is in the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. So this was a big deal. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. So there again, the author here is tying Sabbath back to God's rest on the seventh day of creation. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Rabbi Abraham Heschel said that Sabbath completed creation. So creation was not complete when God created humankind on the sixth day. It was complete when God rested with his creation, with his image bearers, on the seventh day. Okay, another important 
instance of Sabbath in Scripture occurs in the Gospel of Mark. It says, one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, and here's the kicker, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So what the Pharisees and some of the other Jewish people, uh, Jesus' fellow Jewish people had done in his day, where they had made the Sabbath into this very rigid legalistic practice that had to be done uh, this certain way where they were even parsing out very specific things that you could or could not do on the Sabbath, such as plucking heads of grain for a snack. So, so the big move that Jesus makes is in saying the Sabbath was made for man, not the other way around. Practicing Sabbath is not about rigid rule following, but about prioritizing restful time with God. All right, so let's talk about four guidelines for how we can practice Sabbath as a spiritual discipline. One initial question to ask is when or how can you carve out time for rest in this season of your life? Now, we're not going to be rigid and legalistic when we talk about Sabbath. We're, we're not going to say it has to be a certain day of the week or it has to occur with an exact form of regularity. I think we need to take seriously here uh, the seasons of life that we are in and that we experience. Some seasons, uh, Sabbath is going to be a lot harder than others. And so for some of us, uh, Sabbath might be a specific day of the week. It might be part of a specific day. It might be one weekend month that we set aside. But if you want to, to grow in faithfulness by practicing Sabbath, I think that's a good place to start is just asking, okay, realistically, in this season of my life, when is a time that I can carve out with regularity to devote to spending time with God. Another, another guideline is incorporate something into your uh, Sabbath practice that helps you connect with God. In other words, Sabbath is about more than just binging Netflix. All right, now I've, I enjoy Netflix. I, I enjoy binging a good show every now and then. But to practice Sabbath as a spiritual discipline is, is much more than that. So whatever your, your Sabbath looks like, whenever that uh, is going to happen for you, what are some, uh, some practices that help you connect with God that you can incorporate into that day? All right, another question is, what refreshes your soul? When it comes to a, a day or a time of rest, what are some things that you're doing that are genuinely nourishing and refreshing to your soul? Just some of those simple life-giving pleasures that, that you know when you walk away from doing this, man, I needed that. Or man, I, I need to do more of that. I think practicing Sabbath should incorporate some of, those, uh, some of those things for each of us. And then one final, um, uh, one, one final guideline is schedule it. If you are a calendar kind of a person, write it on your calendar. Put it in the calendar on your phone so that you can intentionally block that time off as a time for you and the Lord. One practice that I have had that's helped me uh, practice Sabbath is uh, what I call coffee shop Sabbath. Uh, so for me, uh, this was actually a, a pre-COVID thing. So I haven't done this as much since uh, the virus uh, has been uh, so rampant. But um I would set aside Friday mornings as my weekly Sabbath, and I would try to guard that time as much as possible in my weekly schedule. I, I have it in my calendar on a, as a recurring thing that I do every Friday morning where I go to a coffee shop 
I take a good book or two with me. I take my Bible with me and I simply spend two or three hours of um, time that's even though I'm in a public space, it's it's sacred time for me and the Lord. It, it's a time and a space that I set aside to commune with God, uh, to, to read a book, to read his word. And, and that is something that works for me for this season of my life. And it, it's a way that I can tend to my relationship with God and have some set aside time uh, with with me and with the Lord. So that that's one way that I have done this in my life. I would encourage you to take some time reflecting on uh, these four guidelines and um, figure out a way that you can practice Sabbath. I think uh, you will be the better for it, and I think it can lead to becoming a more faithful people.